A blessing to be able to have a guest with us uh, tonight, or this afternoon. So do me a favor, welcome to the Fusion Alaska stage, the Eskimo Ninja, Nick Hansen. Come on out, man. You know, I was going to do the same thing, but I didn't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> Appreciate you, man, coming by. Absolutely. Uh, I know I shared a little bit with these guys the other day uh, about how it was kind of a last minute deal getting you on board. Yeah. Uh, so I saw a friend of ours that used to live up here, lives in Chicago now, and you were just down at a Harvest Crusade, I think it yeah. was, correct? Yeah. And she posted a picture of you there. And on the whim, on Monday night, I think it was, this week, like the, yep. just a couple nights ago, I shot you a message on Facebook out of the blue. It was like, hey, I don't know if you're gonna be in Alaska or even anywhere near us, but if you're here, Fusion's going on, we'd love to have you come share. And you graciously said, absolutely. Absolutely! Which is awesome. So let's give him a big round of applause. He has, he has a lot going on. Uh, I do. You're busy, so. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, absolutely, do what you gotta do, man. We, we gotta do this, hold up. What is up, you guys? Man, all these young faces standing here for God. That is awesome, man. That is awesome. I need, I need to get a video of this. Check this out, you guys. We out here getting interviewed on What's stage up, at Fusion Alaska. Yeah. It's happening. So cool. So much fun. So, um... What was really cool about the response that you gave me the other day, and we'll talk a little bit about what's been going on in the last couple of years of your life, but yeah. one of the things that was really cool to me, so we've been doing Fusion for 12 years, this is our 12th year, and when, when you responded to that message that I sent you, you put something in there that just blew my mind, and it kind of, it was cool, because it was like, you see the impact of, of what we do as a ministry here. Uh, can you tell, what year did you come to Fusion Alaska as a student, as one of these guys? Year one. <laughs> there it is, right there. Like, so, I hate to break it to you, so we discovered this the other night. There's like a handful of them that weren't even born yet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so if it makes you feel old, uh, welcome to the club. But, um, so, <laughs> Nick, just tell, we want to hear your heart a little bit. We just want to kind of hear a little about who you are. So why don't you tell us a little bit about growing up in Alaska, like where you grow up, mm -hmm. um, a little about your family life, and we'll, we'll get into the ninja stuff here in a little bit. Uva Manik Ilhutiak Hansen, in Upiaguranga, Unalatlimen, Utkavik Minlu, Alaskami. Apaga Charlie Hobson, Asi Akaga Adeline Katungan Hobson, Mauga Eben Hobson Sr., Savakpunga Roa, Alaskami. I'm an Inupiak Eskimo. Glad you put that up. My Inupiak name is Ilhutiak. And I am named after my great uncle Eddie Hobson Sr. And I reign, uh, my bloodline comes from Unalakleet and Barrow, Alaska. I'm also mixed European on my dad's side. And I'm proud of both my mixed European and my Inupiaq heritage. Uh, my great grandfather is Eben Hobson Sr. And he's the founder, if you guys know what the, raise your hand if you know what the Alaska Federation of Natives is, the AFN conference held every year. So my great grandfather founded that hoping that Alaska Native people can have a voice in government. And that's pretty much where I come from. Uh, I was born and raised in Unalakleet, a town of 750 people. Raise your hand and make some noise if you're from Unalakleet. Hey, there they are. I knew they were here somewhere. I knew you were here. I was wondering who all came. I see you, Margo. I can't, man, man that's the only face I can make out right now. It's glasses, 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 glasses. They're all reflecting from the light. <laughs> but. Yeah, um, my youth leader when I came was Adam London. No, Adam Well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, you, were, you were just talking backstage. Uh, you've been doing Ninja Warrior for how many years now? Uh, it's been four years. Four years. Now, yep. I, I've been a fan of the show for, for a long time. My son and I watch it together. It's a great time. I wish I could do half the stuff that you could do, um, <laughs> but 220 and 6.7 aren't made for a lot of those obstacles, but that's cool. You know, maybe the warped wall, just because I got yeah. a longer reach. I was going to say, I was like, you could do that. <laughs> I think you could do it. Do you guys uh, think you could do the American Ninja Warrior? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, you guys are nice. Yeah, good job. Um, but how did you like get to that point where you're like, you know what, I want to do that? 
You know, um, I was a college student, and young people, take this into the, the real, real truth here. I was a college student, and I failed college. I was a basketball player my freshman year. That kept me my grades up for the first year. Afterwards, I was too short and, you know, basically just too short to play in college basketball. I'm only 5'10", I'd have to be Nate Robinson in order to get some sort of scholarship. So I realized that real quickly and I said, hey, I'm gonna quit the team, but I'm glad that I gotta be a part of it. And then I started playing Halo and Call of Duty and yeah, yeah, woo! Now I play Fortnite, hey -o! Um, So uh, those games kind of tore me up, you know, and, and I kind of lost all my scholarships for college And then I was like, you know what? I got to figure this out and you know God called me to say hey You got to figure out what you're gonna do in life and I didn't know it was God telling me at the time um, But but it was and I went home and I started coaching and I realized real quickly that my passion Was all these faces right here all the youth of Alaska the youth of my community those girls all back there They motivate me every single day um, and it's the kids that really motivate me to do what I was doing and I, I wasn't doing it in faith because when I was in high school and I went to Fusion for my first time I kind of started to feel like Church was a ritual. It was like I have to be there. It's something I'm forced to do So I kind of started to resent it and then it wasn't until I was in eighth grade uh, Excuse me. It wasn't until four years ago an eighth grader came to me and he said you should try out for American Ninja Warrior. And his name was Aiden Ivanov, and he's one of the top athletes in Unilakleet now. And uh, he said, you should try it out. And I was like, okay. And then next thing you know, a community member from totally not talking to Aiden said, you should try out. Someone else said, you should try out. Someone else said, you should try out. And I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's really And then cool. I got on the show. <laughs> so how, what's that tryout process look like? Was it like a video submission? Did you like fly out for a tryout? No, it was like I built my own salmon ladder, my own warp wall um, out of driftwood back at home off the beach. And um, I built those two obstacles and I knew they were the best things on the show. Made a submission video that was three minutes long. Submitted my application, which is basically like a 10 page research paper of who Nick Hansen, the Eskimo Ninja is. And then um, they called me and said, it, I remember it very clearly, his name is Jeffrey, he said, so, do you want to be in Houston or LA? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, you got on the show, be excited. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this guy's just like, I was like, and then I started screaming, I was like, ah! kind of like I was on the show just a minute ago, and I'm like, I didn't even know I could squat that low. <laughs> but it was just like a hype moment for me. And then I was down in LA and competing. And, and I'm gonna probably answer another one of your questions here in just a second. I was down there competing and I met this guy. His name is Grant McCartney. How, raise your hand if you know who Grant McCartney, the Island Ninja is. Okay, okay, yeah. He's got the dance moves, you know what I'm talking about. So he's a big, big time follower of Christ. He's probably, he should be a pastor at some point in his life. He's just born for it and he just, he's so good at it and he just, it was right before our run, we were hyped about just being rookies together. We were like, oh man, we're on the show, dude. Like, this is crazy, this is exciting. And then he was like, before, I, before my run, I was like early in the show, he's like, do you mind if I pray with you? And I was like, uh, you know, I was kind of faded. God was like, eh, prayer, eh. And I was like, sure. And then he prayed with me and two grown men, okay, Five foot ten, Grant's six foot two, probably two ten at the time, just raw muscle. I think he has hair on every corner of his body, he's like a gorilla. <laughs> two grown men praying, tears just dripping down, like of excitement, of joy, of things that we've gone through and things that we're about to accomplish. And in that moment, I was called back to God. And in that moment, I was brought back into the world. And it's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. It's cool to hear how God uses things that we're passionate about and yeah. things we're excited about and catches us by surprise. I Absolutely. Know that's part of my story, and I know that's a lot of their story as well. Um, what is uh, what has been like if you could rank like all the moments of like your Ninja Warrior experience, like top one, like <laughs> that could the, it shines in your memory, like you could, you'll never forget it. You know exactly like the smell in the air, like everything, <laughs> like is just locked in. What would it be? Oh man, you know. There was this moment, and it wasn't even on camera, not on the show, not anywhere, anywhere near. We had 
So there's a big ninja church. I, I'm going to call it a ninja church because the church isn't the place we're in right now. This isn't the church. The church is the body of people here. The church is the people that create and worship and praise the Lord and be a part of him and want him to welcome him into their lives. That's what a church is. And we were behind the scenes and there's this moment and they just posted a picture of it. Someone snapped a back, backstage photo of it. All of us just got together and we were like, this, this nice, I, someone said, I feel nervous about this night. We need to pray for this. It was Travis Rosen. And we all just hugged together in this huge, I mean, giant circle, probably 30, 40 ninjas. And we were all together and it was in the Las Vegas finals right before stage one where everybody has to go out there and put everything on the line. And we all circled up and we just prayed. And Travis prayed over all of us. And then Daniel Gill, the kingdom ninja, prayed over all of us. And then Graham McCartney got in and he prayed over all of us. And it was this moment that I realized, like, there's so much more that we're doing as ninjas than just being cool on TV and doing crazy stuff on these obstacles and making a brand name for ourselves or whatever that might be in other people's lifestyles. It's... We're, we're, we're presenting the Lord to people in ways that we never even understood. The same way that God used me through coaching to help grow youth and try to motivate youth and speak to you guys. And the same reason I'm here now, unexpectedly, just happen to have an opportunity to come here and be a part of Fusion again. Did anyone else see that spit that just went flying? <laughs> I tried to catch it. I, I was too slow. I missed it. But it was that moment that... <laughs> that really stuck out to me, and that moment that I will never forget. That's awesome, that's cool just to see the community. I, you know, I was watching it the other night, and I said, I said something to my wife while we were watching, I was like, it seems like there's a pretty strong faith community. Like, it's translating through. I know mm -hmm. secular media a lot of times tries to edit stuff out when they're doing stuff, and right. they, they don't like to see Jesus be at the forefront of everything. Right. But man, sometimes it's just so present that it shines through, yeah. and it's just, and I've noticed it this season more than anything, that yeah. you guys are shining bright, and it's, it's, it's making an impact, so <laughs> that, man, don't, don't stop there. Thank you so much. Um, what is, we'll, we'll get to a fun question here, all right? Okay. So, your absolute least favorite obstacle that you came across, like, the one that you hate the most, like, you, you find out it's in the course, and you just want to curl up in a, in a ball. Like <laughs> oh, gosh. Anybody got any guesses? Wing nuts, salmon ladder, all of them. I like that. <laughs> Flying squirrel. All right. First of all, let me just, I'm going to field a bunch of these questions that I heard. Wing nuts, love those. So much fun. Oh my gosh. Best obstacle on the, on the show. Flying squirrel, so cool. Have to be perfect in every moment. Salmon ladder, nailed it. Nailed it. The salmon ladder is by far the hardest obstacle on the show. And every time I get to it, I have this small moment of, am I gonna get this? I've never fell on my obstacle at home, <laughs> but that's made of wood. This is metal and sketchy. <laughs> and I know they probably put grease on top to make it slipperier. Hmm. So I always have this moment of like, can I do this, can I do this, can I do this? And I go, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, on the opposite side of that, absolute favorite obstacle. Warp wall. Warp wall. Done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Done. We're, the, the standard warp wall is how tall? 14 feet. 14 feet. And, and they raised it the, to 14.6. Okay. And then that, at the, the qualifiers, you cleared, was it the 18? 18 feet. Okay. Well, that's insane. <laughs> Uh, you were, weren't you the first one in that round? At least on TV, they made it seem that way, and I know editing can do some crazy things, Edit, but... <laughs> editing does some crazy things, and I'm not trying to toot horns or anything, but Grant McCartney would step in right now and be like, don't listen to what Nick says. <laughs> I was the first ever in history to conquer an 18-foot wall on the Woo! show. Awesome, man. That's so cool. So, yeah! a big storyline. Bring it, bring it, bring it. A big storyline, they, they play big on the fact that you're from the village and you're, you're mm -hmm. out in the middle of nowhere training in the elements and all that. And, mm -hmm. um, the warp wall that you built yourself, yeah. how tall did you make that one? So that one's 14 feet, about 14 feet four. Okay. And it's got a 
stupid over curve. So the regular warp wall stops a little bit over a quarter pipe. Okay. Mine tries to make a full circle. <laughs> uh, you just run in loops around it? Just, yeah, just go up and I flip and then come back down and flip. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't try that at home. It's super scary. Um, but then I built a 16-foot wall last year. Okay. Um, because I saw, on, I saw on the show that they had done like a 19-foot wall in like the Ninja All-Stars. And I was like, ooh, I want to do that. And I built a 16-foot wall kind of preparing for it. And I was like, darn, I should have built this bigger. And uh, thankfully, I got a chance to hit an 18-foot wall this awesome. season. And uh, now I know I can do that. That's so cool, man. Well, hey, um, we're, we're running a little low on time. But I want to I ask you um, to kind of... If you could leave this room of teenagers, we've got about 800 students from all over the state of Alaska. We even have some Canadians here. We have some Canadians here. There they are. Wow, you guys came a long way. We have a translator, so every other word, someone in their ear is going, hey. Right uh, so it's, talk, uh, it works. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, if I knew, I would have talked like that, eh? <laughs> but, um, I'm if, a bear, eh? I'm a moose. If you could leave them with just like a challenge or just a word of encouragement, like, one word that you can leave them with, what would that be right now? Um, you know, in the Bible, I, one verse that really sticks out to me, um, I think it's Ephesians 6, 4. Um, it's, it talks to fathers. It says, fathers, raise your kids. Um, raise your kids right, so that way when they become fathers, they'll know what's right. And in that moment, I, I feel like it's talking to me, even though I'm not a dad, but I'm a coach of a lot of students that may not have dads, a lot of single moms and parents, and um, single parents in general. And um, I feel like that's my opportunity to kind of shape kids and mold kids at a younger age to try to help grow them. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on the Ephesians. If it's not Ephesians, I know it's an E. It starts with an E. Um, but um, so what my message is every single time that I get up somewhere is to know who you are. All of you in this room, you may know your name. You may know where you're from. And you may know your parents' names and your siblings if you have any. But to truly know who you are, to truly know where, what that means, like my Inubap name is Iluujap, named after my great uncle Eddie, who was originally uh, shipped in on a whaling boat that came from Liverpool, who was the son of a prince that was married to a princess from Liverpool. To know those details, to know that backstory, that history, my great grandparents on my dad's side, a pilot that helped name all the plant life in the Arctic Circle. He was a pilot in the Canadian Arctic, and his, he's Italian originally, that comes from Sicily. And the, the, to know all of those things that matter so much. Um, Sicily's in Italy, right? It's a little island thing? The boots kick in Sicily. The boots yeah. kick in Sicily, That's right? I always remember it, yeah. Double checking. So I want to make sure. I always, out of, you know, I'm on both stage and I'll say something, and I'll be like, it's not Sicily. What was I saying? Like, but he comes from all the way over there, flew the botanist that, like fireweed, for instance. You guys know what fireweed is? He flew the lady that named it, that categorized it and put it in books. Um, so that, that was his der derivative. And those things matter to each and every single one of us. Not my personal story, but your guys's. Who are they? Who's your grandparents? Who's your parents? Where does it really come from? And with Ancestry.com, now you can do all kinds of crazy stuff and find out that you're actually part Asian, part Russian, part Antarctican, part penguin. I think, I think I'm part penguin. You're part penguin? Yeah, she's part penguin. So, you know, that's my big challenge. Know who you are, because without that, the foundation, you know, God's made us each individuals um, in, in our own right, and he, he's created us for our own purpose, and every single one of us has a path that we follow. But if you don't know who you are, you won't know where to start your path. And if you find that knowing who you are, you'll find the starting line to your path, and it'll just be like laid out right in front of you like a golden rug all the way to those pearly gates. Man, yeah, that's awesome. Thank <laughs> you, man. Hey, and we, let's do something. I want to pray for you, Nick, um, oh, as we get ready to go. Um, you cry. are on a platform that so many of us will never have the opportunity to reach as many people as you're reaching with what you're doing, and we want to just pray for you and equip you and just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because you're reaching people for Jesus, running up warp walls and celebrating like a madman. So uh, let us pray for you, and then we'll go on with the rest of our rest of our session. All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for Nick and just his love for you, Lord, and his 
his history, Lord, and just we thank you that you've got a hold of him uh, and that you're using him to spread the gospel around the world, Lord, to fulfill the great commission that you've called us to, to, to tell others about your love. God, I pray for Nick as he's on this platform of, of uh, Ninja Warrior, Lord. I pray that you continue to, uh, to guide him and direct him, give him the words to say, uh, Lord, the spirit to hold, Lord, and just be able to uh, guide him and direct him, Lord. Keep him safe, keep him healthy, allow him to continue to do what he does at a high level so that more and more people can hear about you, Lord. God, thank you for allowing him to be here with us today to challenge us and encourage us. God, I thank you for these students just being attentive, and as we go on with the rest of our day, Lord, I pray that you would just draw us into you. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nick, Amen. we appreciate you, man. Let's give Nick a big round of applause. All right, so Nick's going to be, you have to hang out for a little bit after the session, or you got to get out of here pretty quick? i got to leave at 9.55. Okay, so after this session, Nick will spend a little time in the lobby, just kind of, if you want to come say hi. Have a good time. It'll be awesome, all right? So he'll be out there afterwards. We're going to get on with the rest of our session. Nick, man, appreciate Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for coming on out. Thank you guys so all much. Right. I appreciate it.